from the BBC World Service in association with ABC and All India Radio. This is Stumped. Hello and welcome to Stumped, your intercontinental hit of news, features and debate from the quirky world of cricket. I'm Alison Mitchell in Melbourne. I was hoping to be in Sydney, but a Covid outbreak brought the border crashing down between Victoria and New South Wales. So I've stayed here in the hope that I'll then be able to be on site at the Gabba for the fourth test. It's been an interesting experience so far, calling test cricket from a studio. You don't see daylight for some 12 hours and emerge sort of blinking at the close of play. But very pleased still to be in Australia and speaking to friends and family back in the UK. A full national lockdown has brought schools closed again. And so homeschooling is to the fore here in Australia. The cricket continues to entertain us and hopefully all of you back home as well, wherever you are. Hi, it's Jim Maxwell for the ABC at the Sydney Cricket Ground. I'm on the other side of uh, the bubble. I can be here at the cricket. And um, if the rain stops during the rest of this test match, we might have a good game. But uh, it's looking a bit better friendly out there at the moment. And um, we'll see how the bowlers manage to turn over the, over the next couple of days. But um, uh, the atmosphere has been quite good so far, despite the fact that only a quarter of the, the ground's available attendance is allowed. And um, you need to get a drink a lot, because if you don't drink or eat, you've got to sit there with a the mask on. The only way you can get it off is to do something else. <laughs> <laughs> well, I am doing something else. This is Chaudhry Sharma for All Near Radio in a golf resort just outside of Bangalore called Eagleton, where we were playing the ABT Seniors event. I didn't play too badly yesterday, but Jim, I have to admit, advantage Australia in this uh, third test match of Sydney. And uh, it's a shame because India, of course, have had their injury problems. They've got some personal problems as well. But it's been a sluggish start for India, and I hope they can do a lot better, as I hope I can do somewhat better for the next golf tournament <laughs> that I've uh, registered in. I think you're in your own bubble there, Charu. Golf <laughs> nearly every week, it seems, at the moment. I tell you, I've, I've, I've got the Botanic Gardens just up the road from where I'm staying in Melbourne, and the running track, the TAM, as it's known locally, runs around the outside. So I'm, I'm gearing up to be as active as you are, I think perhaps post-play um, the next day or the day after. <laughs> but let's get to action of the cricketing kind and the action at the SCG where Jim is. The third test between Australia and India with the series perfectly poised at one apiece. Here's a little flavour of the early action. Siraj bowls and Warner plays at this. He's caught and slipped. A loose shot. And Warner's on his way for five. Bukowski pulls it into the onside for four. And goes to a half century on his test debut. He's facing now as Sani has him forward. And he's hit on the pad and the bill for LBW is out. It's a boundary for Marnus Labashain, and it is a half century for Marnus Labashain as well. Final ball of the day, Sadie comes into bowl, and that's worked into the onside by Labashain to square leg, but there's no run, and that completes the first day here of the Sydney Test match with Australia ending on two for 166. So close of play on day one, Australia reaching two for 166 with Marnus Labashain not out on 67 and Steve Smith with him on 31. He certainly found a bit of fluency. Uh, but Jim, the story of the day was Will Pekowski on test debut. What have you made of what you've seen so far? He played with a, a lot of assurance and it was very calm, impressive the way he stood up and played through the line. He had a, a little bit of luck, but he hasn't had much luck in the last 18 months uh, with various things that have occurred around his cricket. But he looks a player of real talent. Plenty of time to play shots. And a number of the boundaries he's hit, he hit today indicated that this is potentially a very special player that we were watching. Um, he was certainly abetted in his innings by the clumsiness of wicketkeeper Punt. He dropped him twice. Uh, and that might prove uh, to be expensive, but um, apart from that, he looked good. He, he looked like he's here for a while, and he gave a very impressive interview at the end of the day. The kid's got his head screwed on, and he's not nice and, and balanced and engaging in, in what he does. So I, I think we're seeing the start of uh, a pretty uh, strong career, potentially. 
He's an intelligent thinker and he certainly looked very calm out there, I thought. Charry, what, what were your impressions on, on him and the way India performed in the field today? I, I, I think there's too much pressure now on Jaspreet Bumrah. And uh, to just sort of take the Indian viewpoint, you know, he'll, he's going to try harder and harder because Saini, as I did mention a couple of weeks ago, is, well, you know, he relies primarily on speed and can go pretty wrong. So he'll give you a boundary ball virtually every over. And it's difficult to keep things tight. Yes, you might earn an edge here and there, but Australia are not going to be impressed with somebody who's 145, 148 on occasion, but you've got to keep making them play. Siraj, of course, is a lot better in that respect. India will continue to hugely miss uh, Sharma. That's Ishant, one of the Sharmas missing. But uh, luckily for them, they have the other Sharma now, Rohit who, of course, uh, is only going to contribute in the batting department. But I have said enough times that he, to me, is the finest classic batsman that India has produced in recent times. It's just up to him now. You know, it's not easy to get uh, flown into a series and then get, uh, what's that, bio bubble and then have to perform as well. So I feel for him a bit, but I hope his injury is 100% healed. And if that's the case, then Australia, watch out. Because, I mean, he is truly gifted uh, as a batsman with so much time and, and, and just so many options on every ball. Yeah, India announced their 11 on the eve of the game. The other notable inclusion was the, the test debut for Navdeep Saini. Um, he, he went for a few runs in one of his overs when he was brought into the attack. But what, what do you think of the way he was used? Mm. Well, I think the skipper's a little confused about when to use him and how. And, uh, of course, he's going to lean very heavily on the spin duo. Now, they've done very well in Australia so far, and they're both very clever bowlers. But, uh, you know, unless the current pair, uh, as in uh, the pair in form, Labashain and uh, Smith, uh, if they score big, then India may have no answers at all. But otherwise, I, I think the spinners will eventually work a lot more. And Boomer, of course, can come back to clean up the tail uh, on occasion. But uh, Ajinkya is bound to be a little confused about how many can he get four or five in a row but the minute Saini leaks a few runs then he's going to go back to his spinners very quickly so I think um, it hasn't been a fantastic start for uh, Navdeep Saini here in this series but you know he's still young and he's quick so those two things go uh, in his favor and hopefully the bowling will, will come good but they are to my mind a, a fast bowler short they've relied on perhaps Jadeja more as an all-rounder because we know he's good for runs as well uh, and he's a clever spinner, but they, they are missing one top quality fast bowler for sure, India, for the rest of this series. There have been some rumblings, shall we say, of discontent from the Indian camp about the strict quarantine rules. Well, they're under in Sydney, but in, indeed what they would face in Brisbane for a final test at the Gabba next week. You know, Alison, we all have to understand that uh, the Indian players particularly and quite a few of the world cricketers have been in these bio bubbles now for very long. Most of them went straight from the IPL bubble onto Australia. And, uh, you know, one can understand the fact that they, they are a little at the end of their tether, should we say, at the tail end of the series. But I would still like to believe that the prerogative of hosting is entirely with the, uh, the host nation. So where do you want to host it, under what kind of conditions, as Jim just said, and to take off from there, I think we all are, uh, should be grateful that the cricket is on and there are even spectators. So I think that gratitude is missing at this point in time from the Indian cricketers, perhaps because they played the IPL, they've all got, you know, enough in the kitty, as it were. But if that gratitude were to kick in again and say, listen, we're grateful that Australia is actually hosting this series, wonderful to be here. You want us to go to Brisbane and go, go into another bio bubble? That's fine. Let's continue to play cricket because people will consider this as a slightly prima donna kind of uh, attitude, one day, saying, well, why would you want to be so concerned about what the host nation, which is going through a lot of effort and money, as, as Jim has said, to host the series, they should say, well, all right, whatever you want, bring it on. We're ready to play and happy to play. What's the sense again on the ground, Jim, as to, well, I guess, the, the contentment or otherwise of, of the Indian team, but indeed if Brisbane will happen? Yes, there's uh, all sorts of uh, speculation about what's going to happen with the fourth test of the series. Uh, nothing official, so that's all it is, speculation. But on the one hand, we're hearing that um, the Indian players don't want to go to Brisbane because of the various restrictions around the hotel and the quarantine, and, you know, they've had enough of that apparently. So if that's the case, they would play the test in Sydney. And the, the long shot is that there might be a test match at all. But, look, let's just leave it where it is, a speculation at this stage. And by the time we all meet again next week, we'll know what's going to happen. 
Yep. Let's let's hope that things do proceed as planned. Uh, I want to also just give a stumped salute to the fourth umpire for this test match, who is Claire Polisak, because she's become the first mm. woman to officiate in a men's test match. She is a member of the ICC's development panel. Normally, the fourth umpires come from the ICC's international panel, but state border closures, etc., is making it impossible for a lot of people to be at the Sydney test, uh, including certain umpires. So Claire has had the call and she's stepped up to the plate, uh, which is a fantastic opportunity. And um, yeah, she, she's grasping it and it's been fantastic to see her out on the outfield. There you go. It's a stump salute and the applause from Charu. <laughs> now, yeah, I hope you heard that. Well done, Claire. Yeah, we did. We did. It wasn't a herd of elephants. It was actually you clapping on the, on the table. <laughs> so yeah, well done to Claire Polisak. From the BBC World Service, this is Stumped on All India Radio. OK, while Australia and India have been going head to head over here, another team has crept up on the blind side and sneaked ahead of them both. I'm talking about New Zealand. Their 2-0 series victory over Pakistan has taken them to the number one spot in the World Test Rankings for the very first time. The Black Caps have won six consecutive tests and haven't lost a home match since March 2017. And that's despite having the smallest population of any of the 12 test playing nations. Their latest victory was founded on a partnership of 369 between Kane Williamson and Henry Nichols. It's New Zealand's highest in Test cricket for 30 years. Left-hander Nichols made 157 of those runs, and I'm delighted to say that he joins us on Stumped. Henry, welcome to you. How are you? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. Thank you for having me. Great to have you on. I mean, you are now part of the number one Test team in the world. How does that sound? Uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. It's, um, I guess it's a funny one. It's sort of something that um, has generally not really been spoken about at all. It's, uh, it's a funny one how it works out over a period of time. I think that's something we probably uh, reflected on after the, the game yesterday was um, that it's not just the playing group that was, you know, played that game. And I guess was the game that got us number one, but it was actually over a period of years and guys have been in the team. And um, it's pretty cool to look back, I guess, over, um, certainly for me anyway, the period that I started the last four or five years. And Everyone's been involved with it, and um, yeah, it's, it was a, uh, it was pretty special and pretty, I guess, yeah, sort of a, a, a funny one because you don't try and aim to do it, but we, I guess it's part of the part of the game sometimes as those things come along. You've been in the team for some five years now. Was it Brendan McCullum and, and his leadership who sort of started almost something of a culture shift into believing that you can be the best in the world, and and, and has that developed then under Kane Williamson? Yeah, I certainly think um, Brendan and then Mike Hesson as well, when he took over as coach, they had, a, I guess, a clear vision for, I guess, not so much um, the goal of number one, but it was, I guess, it was like like I spoke about, the way the team wanted to play, um, the way we the sort of, I guess, people we wanted to have in the, they wanted to have in the team. And um, I guess certainly from there it's grown, and Brendan was obviously instrumental in that, the captain that he was, uh, the inspirational captain that he was, and then to have someone like Kane, Follow in his footsteps. I guess we've been pretty lucky to have two amazing players, but also actually leaders, and who really drive that. And when you have someone like Kane, for instance, as your captain, and obviously with the runs or whatever, but actually the way he holds himself and the way he leads, from example, it's pretty cool, really, to have someone who's that good. But is just so understated and, and so humble with everything he does. So it's been years in the making, but also it's not something that there's a finish line with. I think it's something you keep looking to push forward with to keep growing and. Certainly new guys coming into the team have certainly been driving that forward as well. Henry, it's Jim Maxwell here at the uh, SCG. Just to go back a year, you might recall that you were getting hammered by Australia. Can you really say that you're number one until you beat the Aussies? Oh, yeah. I'm, oh, Jim, it's a great point, mate. Yeah, I'm not quite sure the rankings work, but, um, you know, like when we weren't number one, we weren't too, <laughs> too worried about it. Um, but like I say, a year ago is a long time. Well, it was... Actually, the Sydney Test I wasn't able to play with, so I was. Um, it's a tour that year. It was obviously it was a tough one for us, but I certainly think as a group we learned a lot from. So, um, you know, when we get the crack to play against Australia again, hopefully in the near future, it's something that we'll be looking to to see it right. Well, hi, Henry. This is Charu Sharma from India. Uh, now that you're into insights about other players, let's pick up another one. Um, 36 wickets in uh, in just six Test matches, six foot six and a bit. Uh, obviously, the height certainly helps him, but what else is special about Jameson and, and how far do you think he'll go? I mean, is he something special? Yeah, he's been incredible. Like you say, it's sort of those numbers and, and even just the, the, I think it's six tests he's played. Like, you just feel like he's been in there a lot longer, and that's obviously a credit to, to him. Um, the way, first of all, I think he's handled the, 
handled the international game and handled international cricket and uh, his skills speak for itself, his height speaks for itself and I think obviously there'll be challenges for him along the way but um, he's certainly showed um, in everything he's done, he's made every post a winner. Um, he's a very level-headed guy, he was he played at Canterbury here for a while with me and so I know him pretty well and um, it's, it's great to see someone like him come in and have that success straight away and I think um, it's a credit to like say to him, but actually also our domestic game. We've seen it with a lot of guys in the last year, a couple of years, have actually come through through domestically and actually hit the ground running. And and so that's it's great. I think it's the essence of our team is is that in all the three different formats is having guys who are able to come in and have success straight away because they're prepared um, and they feel they feel comfortable. You know, because I am such a big fan of New Zealand cricket, I feel for the fact that. Australia, India, others get to play four or five test series, but you guys don't seem to somehow be getting the big four or five match test series. Is that, does that bother you? Uh, oh, I think it's something we've probably got used to. It's something that um, I've had, I've, I've only, I think I've only played in yeah, two or three um, test series of longer than two matches. So, and that in itself has its own challenges, I think. It's something that you enjoy of playing in different bowlers or you might, maybe they've got you at a couple of times or different matchups and, and things that evolve from that. So, so certainly I think when you watch Australia India four match, the Ashes five test, you do get a bit jealous of that and wish you have that opportunities. But um, as Jim said before, you know, we had those last year three tests in Australia and we lost three nil. So perhaps when we get the next opportunity, we need to be a bit better. Henry, thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate it. And congratulations on the win, on the part you've played in it and the success that you're enjoying with the New Zealand team, the number one team in the world right now. Thanks, guys. Cheers. From the BBC World Service, this is Stumped on All India Radio. Well, that's all we've got time for on this week's Stumped here on All India Radio. You can keep in touch with us on Twitter via the hashtag BBC Stumped and download our podcast from your favourite podcast provider. My thanks to Chari Sharma and Jim Maxwell and to you for listening. Join us again next time. Bye-bye. Stumped is a BBC Sport production for the BBC World Service in association with the Australian Broadcasting Corporation and All India Radio.